Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, this video has been motivated by Tommy Kelly, formerly known as Tofu Tommy. Thank you very much for the inspiration, brother. Today we're going to talk about the Bible and eating meat. Quite often we see street interviews where vegans try to convince Christians that they should be vegan. Jesus would save the lamb is one of their arguments. So if so, let's say today, who's going to kill a baby lamb, Jesus or the devil? Which one would condone the killing? Man. Kills no, no, the lamb. No, no, no. Today we're gonna go straight to the source, look into the Bible and clarify if we should eat meat or not. Starting with the book of Genesis, God tells man, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. So pretty straightforward, created as omnivores, we have the choice of what we want to eat. If you want to have a salad with your steak, God bless you. Moving forward to Leviticus, we see the passage and the pig because it parts the hoof and is cloven footed, but does not chew the cut is unclean to you. You shall not eat any of their flesh and you shall not touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. One of the reasons why I personally do not eat any pork. In Deuteronomy, we read, you shall not eat any abomination. These are the animals you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope and the mountain sheep. Every animal that parts the hoof and has the hoof cloven into and chews the cut. Among the animals you may eat. Yet of those that chew the cut or have the hoof coven, you shall not eat these. The camel, the hare, and the rock badger, because they chew the cut, but do not part the hoof, are unclean for you. And the pig, because it parts the hoof, but does not chew the cut, is unclean for you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. Of all that are in the waters, you may eat these. Whatever has fins and scales, you may eat. And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. It is unclean for you. You may eat all clean birds, but these are the ones that you shall not eat. The eagle, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, the falcon of any kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the night hawk, the seagull, the hawk of any kind, the little owl, and the short-eared owl, the barn owl, and the tawny owl, the carrion vulture, and the cormorant, the stork, the heron of any kind, the hoopoe, and the bat, and all winged insects are unclean for you. They shall not be eaten. All clean winged things you may eat. You shall not eat anything that has died naturally. You may give it to the sojourner who is within your towns, that he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner. For you are people holy to the Lord of your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. In the New Testament, however, we can read Peter's vision. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. So how to interpret that? Even Jesus himself said, don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? for it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach 
and then out of his body. In Paul's letter to the Romans, and that is one of my favorite passages of the Bible, it states, one person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. And here is my favorite prophecy. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, aka now, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducting spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctioned by the word of God and prayer. So there you have it, guys. The Bible is very straightforward when it comes down to eating meat. And even further than that, not only does it recommend which animals to eat, it even warns us from the end times from the vegans that are truly following the doctrine of devils. It warns us from the times where people will lose their faith and where they will abstain from the meat. So very crystal clear description. Every time a vegan tries to convince you that even Jesus himself would recommend veganism, you can show him this video. Guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And guys, if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. If you want raw grass-fed liver, but you cannot stand the taste, Grassland Nutrition has the solution. Grassland Nutrition takes grass-fed organic beef liver raw and freeze-dries it for you. It is a convenient, fantastic way to get the nutrition of liver without the taste. We have Amazon links for you. You can head over there, buy whatever you might want to buy, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. We get a small share. That is a fantastic way to support Bobby's perspective. If you want grass-fed beef delivered to your doorstep, butcher boxes for you. And we have CBD links as well. On top of that, guys, consider supporting Bobby's perspective through Subscribestar or Patreon. We have a VIP community there where we have Skype group calls every single week where we can discuss any topic, no matter if it is health, lifestyle or nutrition related. On top of that, by joining, you straight away receive your comprehensive nutrition guide. It is an ebook that teaches you the basics of nutrition, but goes beyond as well and is catering to your personal goals, no matter if you're keto, primal, paleo or even raw. All right, but this is it for today. Thank you very much for your support, guys. And as always, much love and peace.